Hi everybody. So we are going to talk about all of the very good points that were made in the book, Good Calories, Bad Calories. Again, this is for those of you that maybe see the blogs, but don't necessarily read the blogs, or you just want the information up front. I'd be like, okay, this is a summary of all the things um, of the book. So take everything with a grain of salt. Um, it does have a lot of studies behind it, but if this type of thing is not for you, it's not for you. So do not take what I say word for word. Yes, yes. Okay, so just going through the main takeaways here again from the book. So dietary fat, and again, good calories, bad calories is about everything. It's about, we had the carbohydrate hypothesis, we had the fat heart hypothesis, um, we had the obesity um, and regulation of weight hypotheses, there was a ton in there. Um, so we're kind of gonna go through everything, but dietary fat, whether saturated or not, is not the cause of obesity, heart disease, or any other chronic disease of civilization. The problem is the carbs in the diet. And again, I'm not talking about green beans and bananas. I'm talking about ultra processed, highly processed cereals, crackers, cookies, chips, those types of things, bread, those types of things. Um, the problem is the carbs in the diet, their effect on insulin secretion and thus hormonal regulation of homeostasis, what our body loves to be in. Uh, the more easily digestible and refined the carb, the greater the effect on our health, weight, and well-being. Because as those insulin levels spike, our body holds on to more fat. Uh, sugars, sucrose, and high fructose corn syrup are harmful because of the combination of fructose and glucose. Um, it stimulates, uh, simultaneously elevates insulin levels while overloading the liver. So again, we just want to pick one. We just want glucose. We don't want just fructose. We don't want the balance of both fructose and glucose, as I mentioned a few videos ago um, with that. Really, we don't want a ton of things that are really going to elevate our insulin levels. Uh, through their direct effect on insulin and blood sugar, refined carbs, starches, sugars are the, are the dietary cause of coronary heart disease and diabetes. So a lot of people think it's fat. It's not. It's sugar and the ultra processed carbs. Um, they are most likely the dietary causes potentially of cancers, Alzheimer's, and other chronic diseases of civilization. Um, another one is obesity is a disorder of excess fat accumulation, not overeating and not sedentary behavior. Um, it's a metabolic disorder, as I mentioned previously in my vlogs. Um, Consuming excess calories does not cause us to grow fatter any more than it causes a child to grow taller. Expanding more energy than we consume does not lead to long-term weight loss. It leads to hunger. So for those of you that have ever heard me say, eat more to lose weight while you're also working out, it's because we need to fuel our bodies to change the ratio from fat to muscle. So that's what we want. You may not see a scale move, but you'll definitely see a difference in the way your clothes fit. Um, fattening and obesity are caused by an imbalance in the hormone regulation of adipose tissue and fat metabolism. Fat synthesis and storage exceed the mobilization of fat from the adipose tissue and its subsequent oxidation. We become leaner when the hormonal regulation of the fat tissue reverses this balance. So it's all about the imbalances in the body. As soon as we are off balance, we're no longer in homeostasis and our body has to fight to figure out either a new one or try and get back to the old one and it can wreak havoc on your body. Insulin is the primary regulator of fat storage. If you have anything with your insulin, if the, their levels are elevated either chronically or after a meal, we accumulate fat in our fat tissue. So insulin levels spike, the fat goes into our fat tissue wherever it may be um, and stays there. It doesn't, it doesn't go, it stays there. So a lot of it's about insulin and insulin resistance. Um, when insulin falls, we then release the fat from our fat tissue and then we use that for fuel. By stimulating insulin secretion, carbs make us fat and ultimately cause obesity. And again, I'm talking about ultra processed refined carbs, not bananas or green beans roots and veggies, whole grains. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the stuff that you buy in a box in the center of the grocery store, okay? Um, I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> By driving 
um, the fewer carbs we consume, the leaner we'll be. So again, ultra processed is what I'm talking about. By driving fat accumulation, carbs also increase hunger and decrease the amount of energy we expend in metabolism and physical activity. Evolution should be our best guide for what constitutes a healthy diet. So it takes time for a population or a species to adapt to any new factor in its environment, including ours. Um, the longer we've been eating a particular food as a species and the closer that food is to its natural state, the less harm it's likely to do. And with ultra processing and, re and being refined and all those things, it's not anything close to what it was. You know, applesauce is not an apple. It's applesauce with xanthan gum, probably red dye 40 and some sugar and something else. Now, if you make it from a whole food, then different. Um, but not the processed stuff. The most dramatic alterations in human diets in the past 2 million years are one, the transition from a carb poor to a carb rich diet that came with the invention of agriculture. So this is also about the ag system and that's actually going to be not the next thing, next one's gut health. The book after that is actually gonna be a little bit about the agricultural industry um, and how that kind of works with our bodies as well because uh, it is not great. Um, Two, the increasing refinement of those carbs. And three, the dramatic increase in fructose consumption with high fructose corn syrup. Because as soon as we figured out an easier, cheaper way to do it, America was like, we're a business, let's do it. Um, so that's that. Um, we can take the necessary steps to prevent these disorders rather than trying to cure them or eliminate them after the fact. Like we want preventative medicine. We don't want to be like, okay, well, now I have this and now I have to take all this medication because I have this when it's something that could have been prevented, but because a lot of doctors don't test functional range, they just test um, what's bad. It's either good or it's bad. There's no gray area, whereas your functional range is that gray area. And that's what you want to be tested for when you go and do your blood work. But a lot of doctors don't do that. So again, also fight for your healthcare, ladies. Um, you are worth it. Last thing here, last main takeaway from this book. We don't get fat because we're sedentary. We become sedentary because we're getting fat. Um, and we're not lean because we're active. Rather, we're active because we're lean and our bodies are predisposed to burn off the calories we consume rather than stash them away in our fat tissue, if that makes sense. Remember that, uh, what is it, causation doesn't equal, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the word right now. Uh, but you hear, you've heard me say it before. Um, just because it's, ah, it's, it, oh, I gotta find it now. Uh, but it doesn't equal um, like that it's something that's valid. So just because it looks like it is, doesn't mean that it actually is. So people think that, oh, you eat a lot of food, so you're obese. No, that's not the case at all. It's the opposite. Um, so just thinking about that, those are the main takeaways from the book, Good Calories, Bad Calories. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Again, starting next week, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into gut health. And then after that, we're gonna get a little bit more into the meat and ag industry.